Uh, good afternoon. Let's talk about these sexual harassment allegations. Uh, the parents were at the school this morning. What explanations were they given? Mm. So, of course, uh, the, this news essentially broke last night, Cathy. Uh, parents were called to a parents' meeting um, at the school last night, and this bombshell was basically dropped on them that uh, the school had for about two weeks now known about these sexual assault allegations against this particular grade six teacher, uh, who we know is a male and uh, is around 55 years old. And these allegations ca came up really once the Metro Department uh, two weeks ago came to the school and had, had kind of a safety seminar around uh, the signs of sexual abuse, you know, how you stay safe in school. And it seems at that particular moment, the children came forward to say, hang on, this has been happening to me. And uh, um, it, it, it seems they had reported it to a number of teachers. And it does also seem that a number of teachers had ignored um, these complaints. And uh, the, the, the parents really finding out yesterday about these assaults and uh, really up in arms going to the school this morning because they were told last night that he hadn't been suspended and that uh, he, had, he was continuing uh, to teach in classrooms. And so Today was basically the parents saying that they've had enough and they would not allow him back onto school property. Slee, I imagine that the school had um, reason for not telling the parents um, were immediately after they find out. What reasons did they give firstly? And are the parents convinced in terms of their own internal investigation and processes that the school is following that they're adequate? At this stage, no, Cathy, because already the trust between the school and the parents has been damaged by the mere fact that they withheld this information from them for around two weeks when these sexual assaults have allegedly been taking place for most of 2018. So um, according to the parents, what they were told by the school is that these incidents happened. Uh, the school was then informed by the Metro Police Department about uh, these allegations that children were coming forward and uh, what they're being told the parents is that they're not being um being brought to the fore about the exact details all we know is that these children were inappropriately taxed. When, when we talk about sexual assault you bring me to my next question what are the details um that the school has been able to to tell the parents or that you've been able to find out about and how many uh, children does this involve mm. so we're looking at around 23 uh, pupils at this stage. Um, between the ages of around uh, 10 and 13, we understand that this is a grade 6 pupil, a uh, grade 6 teacher rather, and would have interacted with uh, the grade 7s of this particular year, and they, they would have probably been grade 6 uh, pupils last year. So at a, we're looking at 23 right now. Police are still investigating. Uh, the Gauteng Department of Education is also investigating, so we don't know if this number is going to increase um, at any stage. But uh, following Doing what we saw at AB um, if you remember, Kathy, where we had around 80 girls or 80 pupils that had come forward. Uh, by the time this case went to court, uh, we were down to around 13 cases because that is just how difficult um, it is uh, to prove these kinds of sexual allegations against um, anybody. And so the department today really imploring on parents to give the police uh, the time and the space to investigate thoroughly and properly and not to um, jeopardize. Uh, this particular matter by, you know, trying to influence maybe children's testimonies or trying to coach the children, which was a really big criticism uh, when the judgment was de delivered in the A.B. Kluma case, that the children seemingly were coached um, on what to say. So the, G the, the Gauteng Department of Education is saying that they will hold their own investigation around the allegations that teachers um, had known about this and didn't come forward. Um, also looking at uh, what the principal did in order to relay this information to the district because there, there's also a lot of, uh, you know, hearsay about, no, I did report this to the district or I did report it to the department, but the district is denying that they knew anything about it. The department saying uh, they only found out about this matter yesterday. So a lot of miscommunication and parents really, really frustrated, unhappy and very angry. Many of them I spoke to saying that I bring my child to school thinking they're going to be safe, thinking teachers are going to take care of them. Um, I never imagined that I'm actually sending them to a crime 
seen, basically. So yeah. uh, parents are really looking for some kind of a resolution to this. So in terms of the sexual assault, Asli, what does it entail? What is this teacher accused to, uh, to have done to those children? At this stage, all we're being told is that the, these, these learners were inappropriately touched. The detail or the extent um, to that is what we're waiting to see as investigations unfold. Well, one of the other cases that comes to mind is, of course, the issue that uh, took place at the Parktown Boys School. And I'm thinking, how long has this teacher been at the school? What kind of work is being done, perhaps to speak um, to, to children who are now um, you know, in, in, in grade seven, or perhaps, um, you know, who, who, who have been there in previous years around um, the kind of activity, especially if, if, if this teacher is found to be guilty here, how long this could have been potentially going on for? So what we do know at this stage about this particular teacher is that he's been at this particular school for around two years. So where he comes from before that is something that we also need to, you know, try and establish. Where does he come from? Um, what is his background? What exactly, why did he leave that other school in particular? And how did he find himself at Valhalla? So he was only recently, when he was appointed at the school, it was an SGB post and it is only now in January where his post was made permanent and now he is part um, of the department and so um, what the parents were also told in that in the delays of him being removed from school property was the fact that um, he is um, appointed by the department and so it is the department only that can suspend him and remove him off school property which is why we saw the department rushing uh, to the school this morning uh, because parents were really planning on protesting and even removing the teacher uh, from school grounds themselves, if need be, uh, but basically saying that they weren't going to leave that school un until they were assured that he wouldn't return, and that is what happened. The department did come, uh, bringing, um, uh, bringing uh, with them a psychosocial uh, therapist in order to, you know, really start that trauma counselling going, and also to kind of find out exactly if whether we're looking at only 23 pupils or more. And I imagine in this case, there's also um, the, the, the way that the department has to navigate mm -hmm. not breaching any kind of uh, labor laws. Um, exactly. As I imagine, this teacher would be opposing all of these allegations while mm -hmm. at the same time uh, responding to what are very serious and, and urgent allegations. Well, thanks for exactly. bringing us the story. Sindelo Masikani was out in Valhalla.